Okay. Uh, my name is Baruj, I'm from Jian. It's a difficult name. And whenever I meet anyone, they feel like they have to change my name into Victor or Vinny, uh, which is fine. Uh, uh, I didn't know anything about uh, the word press. And I learned it from my barber. I was, he, he was cutting my hair, and I, from the edge of my eyes, I saw this beautiful website with his logo and everything. I said, who designed you as well? I said, he did it. You did it. He, uh, uh, he said, you know, download the WordPress. It's very easy, a couple of templates. You put your picture in it. You type a couple of text, and you have a website. And I was, like, very excited because this way, you know, it should be a good reinventing myself and uh, making money and conquering the world, stuff like that. So when I went home, I had to watch like 300 uh, YouTube movies until to get the hang of it. And I also uh, joined you guys, which is, uh, you know, a great opportunity for me. But then I realized why for some people it's so easy and so for some people it's so difficult. Uh, you know, to get to know the program. And uh, I admitted myself that I am a dummy or an idiot, which is wonderful because there's a whole market about dummies and idiots. So I went to the library, I got the um, uh, WordPress for dummies, and I started from there. It was very good, and I, it helped me to just put together this website, uh, which is my wife's website. There's no deadline in it which gives me a perfect opportunity to practice on the website. But I'm having such a difficulty uh, kind of organizing the page. There's so much white space around it, and I'm not able to move the pictures up. You know, simple things like this. I, I, I'm just going to read something from one of the forums. What if I am deaf, dumb, and blind with respect to HTML? Any, what you see, what you get, way to do this? Not that I know of, WordPress is pretty crude as far as uh, w, uh, what you see, what you get designed. You are better off learning some HTML and CSS. Isn't the whole idea that you, have, you don't have to learn coding? <laughs> <laughs> so that was my, that was my uh, you know, uh, disappointment. That's what happened that there is, when I first started, there was this incredible illusion about uh, WordPress that it's going to do it for you. And then once you get into it, it's pretty sophisticated. And one thing I realized that uh, WordPress, regardless of its height, it's not for the weak of the heart. If it's difficult, you got to spend the hours and invest effort and time. And, um, and I'm very fortunate, you know, I, I have, in the, my past, I have joined poetry groups or Zen groups and nudity groups. This is the first time I'm enjoying to be part of this group. I just want to express that to you. And thank you, Don, because when I came in and I had questions, you already gave me so much information that I, I was able to go home now and make some adjustments. Thank you for the opportunity, Steve. That's the presentation. Oh, okay, great. Uh, great. <laughs> I'm just excited to be here, to be a beginner. And it's not going to be easy right for me, especially when you you listen to this genius right here. Uh, yeah. So, I have a recommendation for you. There okay. are some drag and drop themes. They usually pay, where instead of having to code, you can literally go in the back end and drag modules around and design a site. Are there so, any e-commerce ones that you could recommend for him? Not off the top of my head, but I'm sure there are some. Or, or WooCommerce, they, they would make up to the WooCommerce plugin, which is free. So there are drag and drop themes where literally no design. Drag and drop Yeah, theme. you just drag and drop, and you literally, instead of using CSS, you say, I want the headline large, larger, giant, you know, that type of thing. But like I said, they usually pay themes, they're not, usually not free themes. And definitely there has to be something to integrate with WooCommerce. This is all new right here. You make and Make Plus um, is really, really good. And they have built-in styling and kind of controls with drag and drop for WooCommerce and Easy Digital Download. What was it? Make, M-A-K-E, and Make Plus. I have another question for you. What do you do? Are you interested in, like, I'm not a teacher, but I'm just curious. Are you interested in learning this? 
more sophisticated side? Absolutely. So, what Absolutely. Are, you, are you pursuing that? Like, what are you using? What are you looking at to pursue that? Like, do you get free? Are you take? Are you Right now, all, all I'm doing is on my own, and uh, you know, by watching the uh, uh, group videos or YouTube videos, um, and uh, and pretty much I'm doing from the books. You know, I just bought a book called uh, uh, the WordPress, uh, the missing book of WordPress, things like that. Well, I, I, I for one give you a lot of credit for standing up in front of the group and like opening up and sharing all that information. I, yeah, I just want to share with you what a beginner goes I'm through. I'm not a you know, <laughs> over here either by any means. There's a lot of people here, but I have you know, a couple of years, but I give you a lot of credit. I don't think when I was as new as you, I was uh, quite <laughs> open up. It's just that between illusion and reality, that's kind of like, uh, gave me like a rude awakening. Uh, because no matter who you talk to, they say it's very easy. A couple of pictures, put it out there, and you have a website. And two hours, you have you know you have an e-commerce website. But <laughs> no, what I'm realizing, actually, I was able to. Um, You guys are wonderful. Uh, I was able, like, for instance, simple things like uh, the the category home that shows about us. I downloaded the plugin to be able to get rid of those uh, page names. And sometimes when you move, it shows. You see? Did you see the word contact us? When you go to home, then it shows and it goes away. So I was able to create uh, menus, which is wonderful. And I was uh, I was able to do create a shop page. Here we go. Now the idea is that how to put it together, make it look neat and kind of more, more professional. I just feel like it's kind of all over the place and it does, it's not getting together nicely. Like when you go to Amazon.com, everything looks beautiful. So that's my, that's my goal. So with your house, you know, I will get there. That's the eternal quest for everybody in this room. Don't let anybody fool you. We're always, always trying to make it look better or do something it didn't do before. Right, Don? Yeah? Hell yeah. Yeah. So we're all just further down the same curve you're on. <laughs> always trying to do something. So, are there anyone who's like me just starting? Oh my god. I have a. I think we're all starting one way or another. Yeah. Everything is What I like though, about even though you know sometimes it's so exciting and sometimes I want to bang my head to the wall. Uh, the amazing part thing is that is is the the support. It's amazing. I mean, you go to forums or you go to the our meetup group. The support is incredible, and sometimes people answer you right away. You know, when you have a question. That's you know that's my hope. That's uh, you know with your cooperation and learning from you, I will you know pass through this difficult period of mine and become a you know a more savvy WordPress user. Thank you so much. Oh, um, are you getting any um, offers for, for your product? Now, in this case, this particular uh, uh, web is my wife is trying. She's a designer. She shows pictures. And she kind of, as a side business, wants to start to sell her products. And there is no deadline yet because she's not ready for with all the products, which is giving me a perfect opportunity to practice on a website. Okay. And uh, naturally, when the time comes and she wants to, uh, you know, put your products, she's not, she's gonna hate everything that I've done so far. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to start from scratch. But the good thing is that it's. 
it's giving the opportunity yes, to manage. practice, to learn, so when the question comes and when the demand comes, I'll be, right, right, be able to manipulate. That's the, that's the whole goal. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Would you like us to try to solve that problem with your home page? Absolutely. Okay. Do you, how, how do you access your file? Do you use FTP or do you, do you edit any of the files anyway? That's another question. I downloaded the uh, web on my laptop, mm -hmm. um, but I just had difficulty to create the website, so I'm kind of working live on the website. Using the, if you want to edit any I files. can go to uh, admin WP. Okay, so let's see if we can, let's see if we, you have time, let's see if we can solve this problem. So the issue, if I remember correctly, was that when you load the home page, where is that? There was something that popped up, right? Oh, that was the fire block? Start showing the uh, page where you had it, those words that popped up and then disappeared. No, 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 I'm sorry. Oh. You, what was the issue that you showed us? You had words that, that contact us. Oh, yes, yes. When so you move it. from one area to another, it just comes okay. and disappears. Okay, you don't want it there. Yeah. Okay. And you made it disappear yourself? I used the plugin to uh, make it disappear. Okay. okay. Let's see. What... So this is um, Inspector it's built into Chrome. And for those of you who haven't seen it before, it shows you uh, what's going on, um, what, you, what your browser is actually looking at. So this, this is now, it. Steve, so what, what's there? There's a whole real estate around the logo, which is uh, taking so much space. Okay, so here's this contact, here's the contact us. So it's there, right? It, the browser actually sees it. I'm mm -hmm. guessing somehow the plugin is removing it, or there's a CSS uh, rule somewhere. Just tough this this this. Okay, but everyone see it is that right? So um, I'm just trying to. Anyway, so let's see if we can get let's see if we can fix this. So this is a page element. So I'm going to log in. What I'm doing right now, you, you shouldn't do. Okay, you shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> WordPress has um, a theme editor built in. Yeah. And if you make a mistake, see? is that new? <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. You've never seen that before. Four, three, two. But, so it's, it's just you know, it's one little problem is. If we make a mistake, the website, the website can go down, and then we have a big problem, then we have to kind of have to get FTP. But if you're willing to sign a waiver, I'm willing to... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Alright, should we try it? Uh, <laughs> it's still foreign. Okay, so uh, we're going we're gonna to look around first. So WordPress has these page, page templates. Okay, it's actually something called the theme hierarchy, and it, and it just kind of breaks down. You can actually just have one file in your website called index.php and it will and pretty much every page would look sort of the same and do stuff. But there's like a hierarchy that shows stuff. And now the page that we were looking at before is the contact us. It's a page in WordPress. WordPress considers this a page. And in WordPress there's a uh, there's a, a template called page.php, right? Really easy. And in most cases that is what uh, shows the information. I'm making guesses now. You know, we haven't really we just kind of looked around. I think it's a guess. Yeah. Uh, since he does have some solution that is removing that text right now, maybe find what that solution is first. Because otherwise, anything you're doing to well, fix it is fighting against that. Uh, it is. It is. Uh, yes. And and no. There's a plugin to do that, which is interesting. But I do think I found it. So, so WordPress has these functions that do things, right? So that's. It, WordPress is dynamic. Anybody here ever built um, like old school HTML websites? Yeah. With Dreamweaver. Um, with Dreamweaver or anything like that, right? And if you wanted, um, and you wanted to write some information, you'd open up Dreamweaver and you'd say, hi, this is about us and we're really awesome, press save, upload it. And then if you wanted to edit that, open up Dreamweaver, type it again, save it, and send it back up, right? And in WordPress, you don't do that, you go into the editor, you type it, and it just magically appears on your website. So WordPress, instead of adding those content, the content uh, that you type into, into Dreamweaver, WordPress actually has these, these functions that uh, replace that stuff with dynamic content. Okay, so when you, when you create a post or a page, and you type in the title, that information goes into a database, and then WordPress looks for a function called, magically, the title. Mm -hmm. And it pulls the appropriate title and it shows it. 
That's exactly what that does. So we're just gonna, I'm going to comment that out. In PHP, all you need to do, and please, everybody here who knows PHP, please double check my work. Yeah. I just want to make sure I'm doing this correctly, right? This is, looks good as a comment. No, okay, so if I press update file, which is really good, you know, hopefully the website won't go down. Um, and if it does, we have a help desk outside. And then if we reload this page, I'm hoping it doesn't, okay, it has showed up again. So that is the wrong template. Okay, it is, remember, it's a template hierarchy. So there must be another contact form page. There you go. This is the template for the contact form. Template, contact form. This, this theme actually seems to have a lot of templates. We're going to look for the title. We know it's in here somewhere. Are we guessing it's in here somewhere? Maybe we're wrong. Maybe it's not in here. There it is, the title. Two slashes in PHP comments it out. It means that it doesn't, it ignores what's, what's going on there. And I'll take this file. I'm going to reload this page. And it's still there. So there's another trick in WordPress here. Okay, Work, most themes, I should have started here, most themes do something called a body, uh, add, uh, I mean, WordPress is very dynamic, right? There's all these things for you. So this is the body class um, of the theme. This is not WordPress specific, this is HTML. And it does a lot of things for you. So you can see, it's telling us a lot of information about this page, right? It's telling us page. Page ID 175, every page, post, everything in WordPress gets an ID. Telling us it's a page template. And here's the magic, page template full width. Okay, so I edited the wrong page template. It's also telling me that I'm logged in. You're going to do those changes? It's also telling us where we're supposed to work. It's also telling us the admin bar is active. This is theme specific. Okay, this isn't just always WordPress. So we'll look for the, let's go look for the full page with uh, template. Template full width, here we go. We're gonna do the same thing, we're gonna look for the title. Right here. We're gonna update that file. Okay, let's see. Ta-da. Nothing up my sleeves. Third time to charm. Did you see that? It's gone. <laughs> it's gone. It doesn't show up. Okay, you didn't use a plugin. We just removed the code that's putting it there, right? So everything you see on a, on a, a WordPress site is deliberate. Like something, it, something is putting it there. You just need to figure out what it is. So that's how we uh, figure it out. So I will remove, I will go back, thank you, ready? I will, I will make those other two changes. So the first one was page.php. Again, we're looking for the head. Oops, sorry. We're looking for the title. Right there. Remove my contents. And the other one was a contact form template. I'm pretty sure there it is. And same thing. So we just fix the gym and sort of understand what we sort of understand. I mean, you don't have to understand it exactly, but the, the concept was, it's very simple. You type in a title in the, in the back end of WordPress. When you go find the page, when you go load the page on the front end, WordPress gets the ID of that page. It figures out, oh, you want to do the contact page? Great. It goes into the database, says find me the, the information for the contact page. Well, the title, pop onto the title. That's how it works. So if I go and deactivate my plugin, it will not affect that at all. No. And then WordPress has a. Uh, you, you had a question? Uh, well, I would love to see you show him how to use the inspector to get rid of the extra space around his menu bars, if if you if there was time. Okay. Okay. Let's see if you try to do that. I mean, I have time. My kids are sleeping. So. <laughs> so this is this is called the WordPress. Uh, Page hierarchy. It gets bigger and bigger every time I look at it. Um, probably best to print on poster size paper. But the idea here is that um, you can get really specific with your files, and WordPress automatically figures out which file to load for every page in WordPress. Every page. But 
If you don't have any of these pages, you may not have any of these files, it always reverts back to index.php. Every theme has to have a file called index.php. In fact, you only need index.php to run a WordPress website. But if you wanted to make your author page look different, right? You create a file called author.php, and whatever you put in there, when you went to view an author page, it would show up. But let's say you only wanted to do it for, let's say you're the first, you're, let's say you're author number one. Every author has an ID. You want your, that page to look different. Just create a file called author-1.php. Now that page will look different than the author. Or instead of that, maybe the name is sbruner, my name, right? author sbruner.php. Now that page will look different. You can get really, really specific. Yeah, this is the template hierarchy, and it goes through all these pages. It's mentioned home PHP. And home that PHP, or, or front page that PHP, depending, a, there is a slight difference. Um, I don't know where to find those on this. But that, that's the home page. 404 page. You, you ever see those websites that are really cool? This is a fun page to, to play with. Actually, I'm going to make that recommendation. This is the page you should, because who cares if you mess this one up, right? So, <laughs> 404.php, a really fun page to, to play around with. Make, make a really cool 404 page. Put an image on it. Put a search bar in there. Okay? Get one of those related post widgets that the was talking about. Let's go ahead. 404. There you go. Rating widget. He's very proud of it, so we're going to check yeah. it out. <laughs> <laughs> Rating widget. Uh, that's all in the subway now. <laughs> Pretty awesome, right? So that's a, that's a really good set. So create a file called 404.php. If you already have one, play around with it. Edit it with blue cares, right? I mean, you can play around with it and have a lot of fun. So it's a good starting point to, uh, to do that. I, I had, um, there was a popular post widget that was in n.org. I, 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 for one, for somebody, I put that on the 404 page. Right, so you come to the 404 page, and you're like, oh, but you know what? Maybe you want to check out one of these popular books. Why not? Just put on there. Uh, the search bar, picture, and like that. So that's a good place to start. Everyone should do that. I want everyone to, ne the next meetup, everyone sends in their 404 page. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, search, comment, there's home right there. See, so this column right here is the basic stuff. But as you go through, you can really look at these, the different dates, date.php. Um, you can get even more specific. You want your 2014 archive page to look different than your 2015 archive page. You could do that as well. Um, you have all this stuff that you can do. It's really pretty amazing. In fact, they just added one. It's singular.php. There you go. Version 4.3. They just added that. Singular is uh, uh, post types. So Otherwise, it's a different signal. Than it is. So. Any other questions? Fix the margin. Fix the margin. Let's see if we can. Oh, wait, Jesus, this is going to be tough. Okay, let's do this. So, what, what, what was the, the, which the, what your other, what's the issue you want to fix? Oh, uh, the menu on top and the logo has so much space between. Um, Tighten it up there. Tighten it up there. <laughs> okay, let's see what we got. So, okay, so. And explain the inspector to him because I was starting to do that before. Okay. Yeah. So, anybody hear a fire, fire bug? If you heard that more. Firebug was like the original inspector. Chrome has one. I, I like I actually switched between two. I kind of like Chrome was a lot of really powerful stuff for JavaScript and, and stuff like that. Firebug, uh, I find it a little bit easier in some ways, but maybe I'm just used to it. But anyway, if I look at this, this is the header block, the HTML header block, right? You see it there, it says header. Um, with HTML5 we use a header. But really interesting is this. Right here. And it's showing. Does that make you dizzy if I just try to stop it? <laughs> and also the colors that are up there. Uh, there is padding on the top, mm -hmm. which is that greenish color. There's padding on the bottom, 22 pixels or issues. And then there's more, then there's a, a border of some sort. And then actually there's a margin of 50 pixels. So there's a lot of stuff mm -hmm. going on there. Is this the same issue on every page? Because if we make the change, it should affect the whole. It would affect the whole site. Is that cool? <coughs> okay. Thank you for getting me into this, Randy. Right, so <laughs> <we can>, uh, <laughs>
<laughs> so um, a couple of things you can do in Inspector is that you can just do something like that. And you can change it right here just to see what your changes are going to look like. So you see we moved it up. Mm -hmm. Right? Now this isn't permanent. This is this is just uh, temporary. Right? Just take a look at it. But we, what we did see is that um, I think I made this change. In gray.css, that's the name of the file, and you can see there's either path here when you hover over it. It's in the theme. The theme is called my style, it's a, a folder called styles in gray.css, and on line 36, 79, there's 3,000, at least 3,600 lines in it. Is are these rules, um, and as long as we change those to zeros, it'll work. So in the editor, this is this does get difficult in this editor. But the good news is we're editing CSS, so we will not take the site down. If we can just the only worst we can do is just make it super ugly. That's the only <laughs> thing. That's really what we can do. So I'm going to see if there's I can find this rule really quick. So I'm going to copy this. This is sort of one I wish I brought my computer. Mm -hmm. oh. Solid CSS. What was the file? Gray.css. I'm in the wrong file. Is it in here? I think I'm in the folder. You can change the URL directly. Oh, thank you. But I think it's in a folder. Is that going to make a difference? Yeah, it's in a folder. Um, oh. Yeah, how do you do that? No, can I give a suggestion? Yeah, that'd be, I would love a suggestion. Um, like any years, even if uh, you had gray.css directly accessible over here, um, my suggestion would be that there are multiple plugins such as my custom CSS, simple CSS. So if we add those CSS plugins additionally and make our own changes over there, the benefit is that even if the theme file changes, those CSS changes will still be intact over there. That is true. That is true. Um, Editing that code is highly discouraged. <laughs> so, well, this goes to something called child theme, the which we can talk about. So, I will say a couple, a couple of things about that. I am, in a lot of ways, I am anti-plugin for things like that. That's just my personal. Like, the more plugins you use, every time you install a plugin, it does something, right? It it, it gets executed all, uh, all the time. It may conflict with another plugin. Um, what if the plugin developer stops supporting it? Now, all of a sudden, you have all these changes in there, and you're like, what am I going to do? So, I agree you could do that, um, but what I, I would probably do is, is create a child theme on this, and this is a different presentation, but what I will do is I'll give you another video for you to watch, to me, so we do. But what a child theme does, and actually the change that we made should be made in a, in a, in a child theme. So, the benefit of what, 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 what he was talking about, which is absolutely true, is that I made a change to his main theme. And if they upgrade that theme, oh. you're going to lose that change. Hmm. You're going to lose every change that you make, that I made you make. <laughs> so this thing called Child Themes, which was uh, released, I don't remember, 4039, something like that. And the idea, was, the idea is that you leave your main theme alone, called the parent theme, and you create another theme called the child. And all, the child only, only has to have, I think, one file like, called style.css. You, you tell that child theme to look at the parent theme. And you activate the child theme. That's your theme. And you can make any changes you want, and it automatically overrides the parent theme. So if the parent, like we've had page.php, if you want to change that file, in your child theme, you create a new file called page.php. You can even copy the contents from the original uh, parent theme, put into the child theme, make the changes there, and you're done. And it never affects the parent theme. All your changes are in your child theme. That's probably the safest way to do it. So we have a couple of videos on our site that show this. We haven't done this in a while, but um, if you go to the archive and you click on parent child themes, which is a tag right there, um, 
you're going to probably want to watch, I would say, this one right here. Yeah. Which was, um, parent-child things, why you should use them. With Daisy Olsen. So Daisy Olsen used to work for Genesis, the Genesis team, the video press. Um, I'm not sure she was working for them. For them. She was, um, she had like really put on the cutting edge of uh, parent-child team. This is a great video. It will give you a really good introduction of what you need to do. And then, even better, is now you have all, you, all the, the original code is saved. You don't have to screw around with it. Really and you have this child being player on it and do anything you want. So I, that's, what, that's what I would recommend. In fact, the change that I made, and we, I can email to you, you probably want to do that in another team. Because as soon as you upgrade it, you're going to say, why is this back? And it's going to drive you crazy. But that's a, a really good. And we probably should do another thing in a child team. Um, in, in Chrome, um, I don't know how many people are aware of this, but you can uh, edit, not only uh, edit in the pane that you had, but there's one where you, it looks like the actual CSS file or, or whatever, and then you can save it from Chrome. Have you messed with that before? I don't know if it's a, a good recommendation for noobs, mm -hmm. but... Is anyone aware? I heard about that. Um, Do you save? Yeah, you there's, save there's right elements, the network sources, well, that would be okay. Elements. Network, yeah, sources. sources right. Um, click there, and if you there should be like a, a C, you could drill down to like a CSS file. But how would I save this? Then making changes in his website. Um, it, it gives you the option to save anywhere in your file system. It's not like it. Oh, so I, I downloaded. Got it. Got it. I got it. Downloaded yeah, to my yeah, it up. Right, well, and and then you could overwrite it. I mean, it's not exactly the simplest set of steps, but. It's a, oh, it's a no, nice feature really of Chrome. Yeah. And when you're editing in that pane, it's doing exactly as you did in the other. You could move things around and this and that. Which is the save button? Is there a save button? Uh, you right click on that pane there, uh, the one with the code. There's save. And it, it should give you a pop up. That is crazy. I just wow. That's awesome. Oh, nice. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So you can make the changes and do it right there. Great. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. So it's great at CSS. It's line 3671. Yeah, if you want, you could just uh, like do an edit right there. It'll it'll move things around for you, and, and then uh, you know it's it's just nice to have things all in one place as far as a, a tool is concerned. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, you might have to do like uh, yeah. c control yeah, so F to, to line, search for the selection. Just click it, it will open it on the right line. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ooh, you've, been, you've been sitting there all quiet. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? I'm sweating up here. <laughs> Who does live presentations? So that was net. Um, margin. Is that it? It was header. 36. Is it 36 something? All this is wrapping that. I clicked on it. Now I don't know. That's a little bit of a thing. So you would just you create a child theme and use that file. And there you go. That's amazing. Anyway, that's awesome. There you go. Okay. So, um, I, I mean, I'm not going to try to stop it, but I'm just curious. I just want to take a look at something really quick. Not bad. 14 plugins. Not what I expected. We had somebody come to came up to a meetup, and I'm not joking, it was about three years ago. She told me that her um, site was loading very slowly. We brought it up, it was loading very slowly. We opened up the plugins, there were 72 plugins. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was like, well, this is one of the things that's a problem. Besides that, there were two SEO plugins, a couple of backup plugins. I mean, she got to the point where she, there were so many plugins installed that she, she forgot what she installed, and she installed the same. Type of stuff over and over. So 
just weed them out. In most cases, you don't need a plugin, you need a code snippet, things like that, or make a change. By the way, the average plugins on the website is 28 plugins. I don't, think that, I don't think that's so bad, only because of the e-commerce stuff nowadays. Right, like you set up WooCommerce, like he did, or Media Digital Downloads. My guess is you're, it's, it's that plus another four point, right? Maybe. That's my guess. So, right there is five. Oh, yeah. I try to keep, I try to keep it lead, right? And also, it doesn't matter. I mean, some plugins are, I know somebody who bought a, a, bought a WooCommerce plugin. It was, it was literally uh, three lines of code for $29.99. <laughs> it was a filter that, that he couldn't find. He was driving him crazy. He couldn't find this filter. Somebody knows what it is. There were three lines of code. 29 bucks, but it's a, you know, it's not a big plugin. Yeah, it worked. Well, what I was going to say about the plugins is that like sometimes I'll um, write like just a few lines of code and put it into a plugin just to kind of separate out that code. Right. And so in that case, I guess the plugin number wouldn't matter as much because it's just a one function mm -hmm. wrapped in its own plugin. Right, a lot of people put a lot of custom code in theme. Right. So, anyway, just want, just be careful. When you install a plugin, think to yourself, I really need this plugin. Can I? Is it possible I can do this without a plugin? You know, like what you want to do is actually removing code. Right. We're not adding a plugin. We're actually removing uh, the title. So we're actually you know reducing that. Um, okay. Well, and here's the plugin. Hi, title. Good question. Yes. Yeah. Um, I have a question about that kind of plugin look because. Um, at an earlier meetup, somebody was discussing the fact that often if you experiment with a plugin and then you decide not to use it and you delete the plugin, some of those plugins will leave crap in your database. That's true. And yep. so I'm wondering, is there some way to look for that or something that you can do about that or something you can use in a responsible plugin? I would create a backup of the plugin, of your database before you, that's the first thing, before you try a new plugin. Yeah. Back it up. Okay. Or do it when he, he was doing, he, he created, he, he want, he's creating a local version on his computer right. using MAP or something like that. That's, like, I mean, that's another for dummies book you want to do, MAP for dummies. But um, it, it, what it allows you to do is run your website on your computer, no internet, you can do it on a plane, you can do it on a cage, this, this, that. Um, but, um, you can play around with it. If you don't like what it does, then you just delete the database and start over again. But if you decide three weeks later, you're you know what? I think it's very difficult to do that. There, there is a plugin that deletes things out of the MySQL database, but you got to really kind of know what you do. <laughs> but there is a plugin for that. Yeah, but you have to know its settings there. I mean, if you have yeah, a plugin that puts it in, yeah, no, you, know, you, know, you, you really got to know what you do. You can't, like, you know, it's not for. You know, I get share from the plugin developer perspective. Actually, I like with regular widgets, we do leave stuff in the database intentionally because today I'm installing it. Maybe in a few days we'll come back, and then you want to have all your settings back again. Yeah. And we got a lot of these users. Hey, I had it a few days ago. I installed it. Now I need to configure it all back. Look for clean options plugins. So I think it's like you want. Know, I think that's. I'm not going to tell you anything, but, but there's, two, there's two ways to deactivate a plugin, right? One is deactivate it, and one is delete it, right? And at least the way the plugin or, is a philosophy is, if you uninstall it, press uninstall, or deactivate, sorry, you press deactivate, it. Right. nothing happens to the database. They're all in there. If you delete it from within the plugin database, it usually triggers a file, which is not loading up now, but if a plugin developer has it, it's still uninstall that page. That the plugin developer can write. And that should clean up. In some cases, they may want to leave settings. I wrote a plugin for somebody once who had a service, and they, um, they assign a unique key to every website. Um, so we deleted all the settings except for that key. So if they came back a year later, they want to reinstall, they want to know who they were. You know, it's one, it was one setting, it was, I, you know, we think it was crazy. So that's not good, it's the code. Well, that's interesting. I've never seen that before. So there, there is no way to do it. If, you're, if, if, if a plugin developer doesn't write, doesn't explicitly write uninstall code, <coughs> then um, it's not going to, it's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. You can look for up the file like installed uninstall that PHP, deactivate that PHP, uninstall that PHP. So in the root folder of the plugin. Yeah. There is also yeah. a hook. Right, there has to be a hook. I mean, you can look for that kind of stuff, but there is no way to do it. Back up your database, which you should be doing anyway. Play around with it. 
and it's three weeks later, you may have to go back to the database. Yeah. Yeah. But, but usually it's not the big thing, it's like one record in the database that follows. Yeah, most of the larger ones, they'll have an uninstall like checkbox in the setting, in the settings page. So when you really want to delete everything, you click that checkbox, delete everything, and then deactivate the plugin, and you should be good. You should do that, right? Yeah.